In April 2021, the graduation textile artwork by Diana Springall was removed from the main hall in Western Bank Library as part of a major restoration project. This is a high profile project to conserve the textiles and replace the old plastics which were installed to protect the artwork and create the distinctive effect of the whole structure. Graduation has been the main focal point of the University Library for over 30 years. It depicts a group of figures wearing graduation caps and gowns, walking proudly in a procession across the library's main hall. In this film we are following the conservation work and the analysis of the plastics used to protect and display graduation. We are also examining some of the stories and insights into Diana's creation that makes graduation so unique. I'm Emily Green and I'm the Heritage Collections Manager at the University of Sheffield. I have been managing the project to remove, conserve and restore the 12.3 by 2.5 metre textile artwork which was commissioned by the University Convocation in 1987 and has been a feature of Western Bank Library ever since. Graduation is an applique textile artwork created by artist and embroiderer Diana Springall. This is one of many works in the University Heritage Collection created by a female artist. Diana has many of her works in national and international collections. She is still very active in her practice and a spokesperson towards embroidery being accepted and recognised as a form of art. The structure of the artwork was cleverly formed to create distinctive waves which give fluidity and movement of the procession of the figures walking across the back wall. This effect is created by flexing large sheets of plastic to create the structure and hold the textiles in place while protecting them from heavy dust and light. The panels vary in width from 72 to 190 centimetres and this depended on the depth of the curve formed and the whole structure fitting together. The panels are divided by columns of silk tubes which represent the university faculties. Over the years, the original plastic has become brittle and discoloured, which in time has toned down the vibrancy of the textile colours, as well as making the structure unstable. Due to the noticeable condition of the plastics, it was decided to remove the whole structure and restore everything back to its former glory, so future students, staff and visitors can enjoy and contemplate the celebration depicted in graduation. Apart from some surface dust that requires vacuuming and areas where the stitching has come apart, the textiles have remained intact and are in good condition. The plastic materials supporting the textile panels and silk tubes, however, have not stood the test of time. It is confirmed that the plastics Diana used are PVC and polycarbonate. Since the removal of graduation in April 2021, the entire work has been taken to textile conservator Melanie Leach at her studio in Norfolk. I'm Melanie Leach and a textile conservator and I've been commissioned to work on the graduation hanging for the University of Sheffield. Um, I've been a textile conservator for over 30 years. In her conservation studio, Melanie is removing the PVC from the tubes. She starts by removing the staples that hold the two sheets of plastic together. She then pulls each of the tubes away to separate them and removes the stitching Diana put in place by using a blade which cuts between the sheets of plastic so not to damage the fabric. The plastic comes away from the fabrics and the contrast is obvious as to where the plastic has been exposed to the light. This shows the amount of degradation of the plastics and absorption of ultraviolet light rays, known as UV. Once the fabric is removed from the plastic, they are vacuumed and wrapped in acid-free tissue paper for storage. To oversee some of the conservation, I have come to Norfolk with my colleague Andrew Moore to Melanie's studio to see how she's progressing. Melanie has managed to carefully remove the plastic sheets from most of the panels and silks and has assessed the conditions of the textiles where she can now treat any areas that need attention. The main challenge for Melanie will be to reconstruct the artwork using new plastics and getting the technique correct to ensure the same effect is accomplished. During this visit, I invited the artist, Diana Springle, to meet with me and Melanie to discuss the progress of the project and to gain a further insight into Diana's making of graduation and discuss how we plan to reinstate her artwork back to its former glory. Diana, wow. welcome to wow. my studio. <laughs> wow. 
unbelievable. Yeah. Well, I can't, I, well, I, I can't believe that you're taking the trouble to do this. Oh, no, I, well. really, I really mean that. That it matters enough to be um, taking care of it. Oh, well, um, absolutely. It's a quite an extraordinary um, piece of work. Diana hasn't seen her artwork since 1987 when it was installed into Western Bank Library. So this is the first time she has seen it for over 33 years. Diana has provided a great insight into how the panels were constructed and about the framework which supports the whole structure. Her assistant was lifelong friend and student, Pat Wright, who helped to sew the embroidered panels together. The textile panels are made up of polyester fabrics, silks and other lightweight materials which have been sewn together to create an embroidered patchwork effect on Dupin cloth. To sew the panels together, Diana used her 1959 Benina Swiss sewing machine, which she still uses. Diana remembers a lot about this commission and the hard work that she put into creating her unique work of art. She says that she's used the same upscaling technique for some of her previous works. If I'm satisfied with a painting at that point, I will then trace it onto quality tracing paper, which I then um, can make a separate drawing. I will actually decide, um, so every inch on my drawing is going to be uh, one foot, depending which scale I've chosen. And then I, I have the, the huge size of paper on the, on the floor or the table, if it fits, to transfer literally square by square. It was Diana's partner, David Pearsall, a world leading engineer who came up with the idea of the framework and the sliding beams to give the overall effect of the figures walking and enable the work to have its fluidity. David's support was invaluable to Diana's work. He was um, a very noted civil engineer and so um, structures, um, you know, were very important. To help with identifying the plastics and to get advice on better and more sustainable plastics, I've come to the chemistry department in the Dainton building to discuss the plastics with a fourth year chemistry student. My name's Rosie and for my master's project I'm completing it in polymer science. So this is a piece of the backboard from the artwork. It's become yellowed, it's absorbed the light and UV acts as a pair of scissors, chops up the molecule and this leads to brittling and discoloration of the polymer. Rosie has been assigned to analyse the material by using attenuated total reflection infrared to determine the molecular structure and explain why this material has weakened. And it will pass light through the sample and the different bonds that make up the plastic will absorb different wavelengths of light. And how this works is the light that's passed through it detects what wavelengths have been missing compared to what it passed through and the percentage transmissions that have come through the sample. And we can see on the screen where there are peaks in the spectrum and these peaks correspond to what's the bonds that are in the polymer. Um, and the characteristic one for this plastic is a peak down here at about 600. Um, that is for a chlorine and that's how we know it's PVC for polyvinyl chloride. The PVC which covered the faculty silks have split and turned yellow and this has affected the true colours of the silks. The replacing of the plastic will ensure that all the colours in graduation will be correctly represented. So we're hoping to replace the PVC in the artwork with this PETG. Um, it's a lot more stable against the UV radiation because it doesn't have the weaker bonds that the PVC has. The weaker bonds are broken by the UV and it starts an unzipping reaction throughout the monomer. It breaks it down, whereas this wouldn't do that, so hopefully it would have a longer plastic lifetime with the artwork. This material recommended by Rosie has UV stabilisers, so it will protect the textiles and offers the flexibility we require to construct the wave effect to replicate the movement of figures walking across the back wall. As this is the first time Diana has seen her work in over 30 years, I asked what her views are towards the care and attention of this project and the conservation of her artwork, and what surprised her the most. Well, I was amazed that the, the fabric itself had survived so well, to be honest, because it is a top-lit room. I suppose I wasn't surprised that plastics let us down. This is the largest heritage conservation project that has been carried out for the University Heritage Collections. Graduation is an important part of the University's heritage and because of this project, it will continue to be admired by future generations who come to study at the University of Sheffield.